face of it, it is a strange question. We know the location of main engineering. We have seen it established in Star Trek The Motion Picture and Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. We know where it is in The Next Generation and Voyager, both of which follow the convention laid down in the Star Trek films. And yet, in the original series, episode dialogue and even visual hints suggest the writers were not so certain. In this video, we will explore this puzzle. Anyone who has glanced towards the deck plans and layout of the Starship Enterprise knows where the bridge is and the hangar deck. In theory, they also know the location of main engineering. But whilst it is obvious on, say, the refit Enterprise, which for clarity's sake I will call the Constitution 2 class, or the Enterprise D, it is not so obvious on the original 1960s Enterprise. Here, I have attempted to recreate main engineering as it appeared in series 2 and 3 of the original series, or seasons 2 and 3 for any Americans watching. An accurate rendering of main engineering is difficult, as props were moved about as the script required. I have deliberately left one of the large machinery props in this rendering, both as a nod to the series or season 1 engine room set, which at times had two, and to fill up space. The port side wall of the engineering set was seldom seen in the series, and this was because it was here the television cameras were often located. The 1987 book, Mr. Scott's Guide to the Enterprise, written and illustrated by Shane Johnson, places main engineering very firmly on N and O decks, or Deck 14 and Deck 15. But this is the Constitution 2 class, the refit, and not the original configuration. The set designers, film writers and producers had put main engineering on the upper levels of the secondary hull, with the horizontal intermix chamber running aft as far as the warp engine pylons. In the Star Trek Encyclopedia, a reference guide to the future by Mike and Denise Okuda and Debbie Murek, the authors put main engineering on deck 19, on the same deck as the ship's hangar. This is not changed in their similar deck directory for the Constitution 2 class Enterprise A. In earlier written works, however, such as the 1975 Star Trek Technical Manual by Franz Joseph and various blueprints originating from the 1970s, the engine room scene in the 1960s television series is located in the saucer section as part of the Impulse Drive Complex. In the television series itself, engineering is talked about as being on B-Deck, Deck 3 and even Deck 5. Yet it must be kept in mind that the Enterprise would have had two engineering spaces one for the warp drive, and another for impulse. On the Constitution 2 class, these were physically linked by the vertical intermix chamber, but no such connection is seen in the television series. There seems no difference between the two engineering complexes. Few ever say explicitly, impulse main engineering, or warp main engineering. And this is compounded by references in episode dialogue to engineering levels and engineering decks. Of course, on a starship that has to carry not only its own energy production and impulse systems with it, but also the means of producing its own gravity, atmosphere, 
food, heat, fresh water, as well as recycling plants and storage space, it cannot be wondered at that there must be a considerable amount of space given over to engineering of some sort. Engineering decks, plural, is realistic, but this does not answer our question. In the Series 1 episode, Court Martial, Benjamin Finney is detected in engineering, but Mr. Spock clearly states the man is on B-deck, close to engineering. We then watch as Kirk searches the main engineering set. It could be that B-deck refers to the second deck of the engineering levels, rather than deck two of the ship overall. Yet, Shane Johnson uses letters for the deck names in his book on the Constitution 2 class. And indeed, if you watch Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, the letter A can be seen on the turbo lift doors on the bridge set, so the idea of using letters instead of numbers for decks is not alien to Star Trek. In this case, B deck would be immediately under the bridge and therefore part of the saucer section. Yet this puts engineering inside the superstructure atop the saucer, and so some distance from the impulse engines at the trailing rim of that very same saucer. In the ultimate computer of series 2, the M5 Multitronic unit is installed in the main engineering set. Linked to what is described as the ship's power plant, the M5 defends itself against attempts to disconnect it. Mr. Spock observes that it is taking power straight from the warp engines, suggesting this engineering space is close to those warp engines, and so inside not the saucer, but the secondary hull. In the Paradise Syndrome, Series 3, we see Mr. Scott examining a dilithium crystal in its articulation frame which has been pulled out of a large structure in the centre of the engineering space. This structure, which looks rather like the cylinder tops of a steamship's reciprocating engine, is linked directly with the warp drive. And as it makes no sense to locate these crystals, so necessary for warp travel in the impulse engine room, we can be certain this engineering space is in the secondary hull, not the saucer. Another Series 3 episode, Day of the Dove, offers two locations for main engineering. The first in the saucer section, the second in the secondary hull. The reason for the first is the existence of a curving corridor outside main engineering. Why there would be a curving corridor inside a cigar-shaped secondary hull is a mystery. But if the engineering space was inside the saucer, this mystery vanishes. Yet, in Day of the Dove, we watch as the Beta 12A entity leaves main engineering by passing through the hull and emerging from the secondary hull's starboard side. The real reason for the curving corridor is that in the cavernous soundstage at Desilu Studios, all the sets for the Enterprise, with the exception of the bridge, were built around a single curving corridor. Dr. McCoy's sickbay, Captain Kirk's quarters, the transporter room, the briefing room and main engineering all led off from this corridor. A diagram of the soundstage layout can be found in the 1968 book the Making of Star Trek by Stephen Whitfield. With this most practical of excuses for the curving corridor, we can be reasonably certain that main engineering is located inside the secondary hull and not the saucer. But perhaps there were two engine rooms, one for impulse and one for warp, and they were both physically identical. If this was the case, then it threatens to create another problem. If the impulse drive engine room was the same size and shape, then doesn't its location at the trailing rim of the saucer 
block turbo lift access from the saucer section to the dorsal pylon. It is frequently the case when writing a script that you discover an excellent source of information on your chosen subject only after you have written the script. In this case, I came across a September 2002 article where on the USS Enterprise is the engine room by Greg Tyler, much to my chagrin. It is on the website trekplace.com and is nerd gold for this subject, full of detail and theory.